Hello everyone! How are you my dear teachers? In your preparation for your licensure examination? I hope you're doing best. I will be discussing today TLE Business Mathematics. The topics may include financial statements like income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement, statement of all equity, trade and cash discounts, depreciation, prepayments, accruals, rules of debit and credit, mark up, mark down, mark, mark on, interest, principal rates, time, and more exercises. Want to have some pointers for your exam? Come on, join us! Are we ready now? Let's start! Okay, the topics that we will be talking about today are financial statements, which include income statement, balance sheet, owner's equity, cash flow statement, and also we will be discussing trade discount, cash discount, depreciation, prepayments, approvals, rules of debit and credit, mark up, mark or mark down, simple interest, principal interest, time rates, and more samples. Okay, for our first slide, we have here okay, the trade discount and cash discount. The difference between the uh, both are this sales discounts. They are granting discounts to clients. But what is the difference between the two? In trade discount, the purpose of that is to say to sell in same bulk or wholesale. While in, in cash discount, the purpose of this is to encourage prompt payment from the clients. Okay? So Another difference is in trade discount, this is not recorded in the books, while the cash discount is recorded in our books of accounts. Okay, let's try this problem. On June 2, 2016, Aaron bought equipment from Joshua, 20,000, turns 10, comma, 2, 2010, and over 30. How much is the trade discount and how much is the cash discount? And how much will you pay on June 12, 2016? Okay, the list price is 20000 The trade discount is 10. Okay, the 10 there is a trade discount. 2 over 10 means 2% two, uh, two discount when paid within 10 days. N over 30 means you should pay within 30 days, but there is no more discount. Okay, so... When we, get, when we solve for the trade discount, that is how much is the trade discount? 10%. It, it is shown there. 10 is the trade discount. So you multiply it by the list price, so you get an invoice cost of 20,000 minus the trade discount of 10%, which is 2,000, so you get 18,000. And if, and if Joshua paid on June 12, 2016, he was able to avail of the cash discount. What is the cash discount? He paid on time. Okay? When he paid on time, there is prompt payment on the on the sale, then a cash discount is given to you. In this case, 2 over 10, so 2% discount when paid within 10 days. Okay, so 2% of 18,000. That is 360. So 18,000 minus 360, so you get 17,640. Okay? Next, notes and accounts receivable. We have noticed that not, not all our sales are, are made on cash. Some of our sales are made on credits. So if the sales is made on credit, it may be on two ways. The, the client may, may give you a promissory note, and that is called notes receivable. But if you do not pay, and then there is no notes receivable, you do not make a promissory note, then there's a simple accounts receivable. Okay, so these are the sales, again, what is notes and accounts receivable? These are the sales made by the, by the business owner 
but they did not receive cash yet. No payment has been made yet. So this is still a receivable on a later date. But the trade, the business owner will be able to collect the sales on a later date as promised by the clients. Okay, so in the course of the business, there may, there may come up a point in time when the accounts receivable or notes receivable a certain portion of that cannot be collected anymore as decided by the management. So, if that is the thing, then we call that the, uh, the bad debts or doubtful accounts. And to get the real amount of cash that is real, that is good to be collected, or we call it the net realizable value, we subtract the allowance for doubtful accounts to the accounts receivable or most receivable, which will give us the net realizable value. Again, what is that account which tells us that a certain portion of their accounts receivable or most receivable cannot be collected anymore? We call it the, the doubtful accounts or bad debts. Okay, then to get the, the net realizable value or the value of the collectible, okay, the amount that you can really collect is you call net realizable value. So you deduct your allowance for doubtful accounts to your accounts receivable. Okay, in this way, you have uh, you have a true picture of your sales. Then we have prepaid expense is an is payment in advance for the future use of an asset. A very good example of this is prepaid rent. For instance, a certain company would want to open a business. Okay, so in order to to open a business, he needs a building or, or an office or a trading site for his business. So he has to rent and the, the, the procedure today or the, the, the process today in renting a space is you need to pay not only for one month but maybe two, three, six or even a year. So, do not pay in advance for the use of the building, then that is what you call prepaid asset or prepaid expense. Okay, so, then we also have accrued revenue. Accrued revenue, it is an income already earned. Okay, we have already earned that, but it's not yet received. Or in other words, it is a receivable. A very good example of this is accrued interest income from time deposits or from savings account. Okay, so when you put money in the bank, there is, uh, though you haven't, uh, especially time deposits, there is a way you can already accrue the revenue, though it is not yet received by the client. So next we have an accrued expense. An accrued expense, it is an expense already recognized or incurred, but it is not yet paid. So it's, it is a liability account. A very good example of this is the electric bill for payment. For example, today is, uh, we are now January, and then the bill for January will not, will not uh, reach us or will not come to our office on, on January, but it will come a month later. So that means we have already recognized our, uh, uh, an accrued expense for electricity, though we have, we have not yet paid for it. Okay, so that is an accrued expense. Now we go to depreciation. What is a depreciation? A depreciation is when you allocate, allocate the cost of the asset over its estimated useful life. Okay, what, how, how do we do it? For example, you have here machinery. A machinery has a cost of 20,000. Okay, the cost of machinery is 20,000. And what is the salvage value? The salvage value is the value of the asset after it has expired or after it has been used or after its estimated useful life. Okay, so 
For example, the Machine Ali has an, uh, has an estimated useful life of four years. Okay, the Machine has an estimated useful life of four years, but on the fourth year, the value of the Machine is still five thousand. Okay, so that means. When you, when you uh, get the depreciation of the machinery for every year, 20,000 minus the salvage value of 5,000 divided by the estimated useful life of four years, you will get 3,750. That means this is your annual depreciation or your yearly depreciation. So if, you're, if you bought this machinery in uh, year year. 2020, last year, for example, you bought this machine in 2020, and today it's already 2021. After a year, the value of the, the net book value of the machinery is the 20, the, the depreciation, 3750 is the depreciation every year. Okay, so it, the cost of the machine lowers its value by the depreciation. Okay, so that's it. And we know for a fact that one of the assets which do not, yes, one of the assets which does not depreciate is the land. Okay, then we also have here, okay, I'm showing here an example or a format of a statement of comprehensive income, also known as the income statement. It is good for us to learn the format so that, um, Whatever type of problem will be presented during the exam, you can imagine the how how the the net income is sold, how the gross profit is sold, and everything. Okay, so we we'll start with the sales. Yes, the sales returns and sales discounts. What is sales returns? Sales return is the item that has been returned to you. For example, in a, in a department store, you bought a piece of cloth, okay? You bought a certain, a piece of, a piece of dress, okay? A dress. And then, when you reach home, you found out that the dress has no zipper or the zipper does not function or it is damaged on it. So your tendency is you go back to the store and return it. So when you return it, then there's a deduction to your sale. And also sales discounts. What is this sales discount? One of which is the cash discount. Okay? We have talked earlier that cash discount is recorded in the books, but a discount is not. Okay, so then we get the net sales. From the net sales, we will subtract the cost of goods sold. And what is the cost of goods sold? The cost of goods sold is that the, uh, the, the expense or the amount or the value of the direct material or the purchases that we made, uh, if you notice, included in the net sales is the purchases, right? It's here, or the beginning inventory, then the purchases. This is the cost of the material that you needed to to sell again. Or it may also include the cost for the goods to be manufactured. The goods, the goods like uh, good manufacturing expenses, like the materials, the labor, and the overhead expenses. Okay, so these are direct costs in producing a certain product or direct cost in selling the product. Then we get uh, net sales when we deduct the cost of goods sold, we have the gross profit, okay? So take note, uh, gross profit is different from the net sales. Then from the gross profit, we will again deduct the general and administrative expense and selling expenses. What are the general and administrative expense? Well, these are the, the expenses we incur in operating a business. But selling expenses are those expenses which can be directly identified as marketing or selling expenses. Like, example, uh, commission for marketing people or the advertising expenses. So these are selling expenses. So when we deduct our expenses from the gross profit here, okay, when we deduct the gross profit, and the expenses from the gross profit, then that's the bottom line of the income statement. And that is the net income or net loss. Okay, net loss is if the, the expenses is more than your gross profit. Okay, so you incur 
a net loss. And then let me tell you that the items, all these accounts in the income statement are called temporary accounts. And you may also notice in my heading, uh, ABC Company Saved the Comprehensive Income for the year ended. Why is it that I put a yellow block and the for the year ended? We always put for the word for the year ended because this is a temporary, temporary uh, this report wherein at the end of the year we will be closing this net income to the capital account. Okay, so we call these accounts in the in the income statement as temporary accounts. Again, why? Because we need to close the net income and not, not only net income, but the entire accounts to the balance sheet accounts. Okay, and the net income will be close to your capital account. Okay, next we have here. Okay, this is the this is the, was this the summary of the income statement. Since less the cost of goods sold equals to your gross profit, less the general and selling expenses equals to your net income. Okay? I want you to memorize this formula. Okay? Then we have here an example of a balance sheet. A balance sheet is the statement of financial position. It tells about the financial condition of the business. Okay, let me repeat it again. If the income statement, this one, if the income statement, it is a statement of, of comprehensive income, which tells us if, if there is an income or there is a loss. Okay, it also shows the expenses of the company. But in the, it is a statement of financial operation. Okay, the operation of the business in terms of money, in terms of finance. Okay, but in the balance sheet, this is the statement of financial position or financial condition. What are the elements of the, of the balance sheet? We have the assets, the liabilities, and the capital or owner's equity. Okay, when we say assets, these are the, uh, the, the, the things that the company owns, okay? So, in short, it will answer your question, what do I own in the company? So, these are your assets. And then, when then we have here the liabilities, what are the liabilities? This is the part of the report which tells us our debts or the, what the company owes to third parties or to the other parties, okay? So, you will notice that the liabilities includes the current liabilities and the non-current liabilities. Current liabilities include uh, accounts payable, notes payable, salaries payable, what else? Those expense, those liabilities that are payable within 12 months. So that is what you call a current liability section. Then we also have the non-current or the long-term liability. The long-term liability liabilities include liabilities which are beyond one year. So it may include um, bank loans payable, mortgage payable, bonds payable, and many more. Then we have the owner's equity. When we say owner's equity, it answers the question, what is left of the company? Okay? If assets ex uh, answers the question, what do I own? And liabilities answers the question, what do I own? Then capital, uh, capital or the owner's equity answers the question, what is left? Okay? What is left after the, after deducting all your liabilities from your assets. So that is your owner's equity. But I, I would like to take note that I would like to emphasize to you now that the owner's equity has its own formula, okay? To get the owner's equity, you have to start from the capital beginning or the investment of the, the, investment of the owner, okay, of the, of the partners, if it is a partnership, then we have the net income. See, the net income is coming from your income statement. So your net income is added to your 
owner's equity, okay? Then you withdraw, then you deduct your withdrawal. What's a withdrawal or a drawing account? A withdrawal or a drawing account is a reduction in the equity or a reduction in the investment of the owner. So a withdrawal is a is a minus to your owner's equity, okay? So then you get your capital at the end. Okay, so total assets, okay? Then we add also the liabilities plus the, the total assets is equal to the asset, the liabilities of 5,000 plus the owner's equity of 5,000. So total liabilities and equity is 10,000 that is equal to your total assets, okay? So this, okay, now we go to the next slide. Okay, this is the basic accounting equation or the fundamental accounting equation that we should not forget. Assets is equal to liabilities plus capital. Where, where did you learn this? From your balance sheet available, right? Okay, next. We go to... Okay, that's not move. Okay, now it's moving. We have the next slide is... Okay, here's an example of a cash flow statement. Okay. If the balance sheet, oh no, no, we start with the income statement. If the income statement shows us the financial operation of a business and the balance sheet shows us the financial position of the business, then we also have another financial statement which we call the cash flow statement. The cash flow statement shows us the 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 inflow and the outflow of cash or the sources and uses of cash. Okay, so, but there are three major activities of cash. We have learned, uh, we have learned that cash is the first item in the balance sheet, right? Assets, the first item is cash. Why is cash the first item in the asset section? Because it is the most liquid asset. Okay, since it is the most liquid asset, we need to be very careful in its movements, okay? There are three movements of cash in our financial uh, activities. Number one, cash flow from operating activities. Then we have cash flow from investing activities. And we have cash flow from financing activities. Okay, so what are these cash flows from operating activities? These are the activities or the, the flows of cash which pertains to the operation of the business. For example, uh, buying and selling of, of, your, of your goods. So that is leasing cash, okay? So the receipts of cash or the receipts of sales. And what is the outflow of your cash when you pay to your suppliers or when you pay to your to your, to your creditors for raw materials. Another is when you pay for salaries of your staff, of your of your employees. So that's an outflow of cash, which happens in the operations of the business. Then we have here the net cash from investing activities. What are these investing activities? When we say investing activities, these are activities which pertains to the Purchase or sale of, of, of machineries, equipment, or what other, what other forms of investment that will enhance the operation of your business, okay? So in this case, in our example, you choose here purchase of machines and equipment. Why is there a need to purchase machines and equipment? Maybe they would want to upgrade their, their operating system. So they need to have new machines, new equipment. So, but the purchase of machines and equipment is an outflow. So there is a deduction, okay? But you can also sell. Sell, if for example, you have old machines which needs to be updated and you don't want any more the, the current machines that you have but are still functional, then that is also a, an, an investing activity. Sale of your uh, other assets, okay? Then we have cash flow from financing activities. What is this cash flow from financing activities? Cash flow from financing activities includes um, 
uh, when you borrow money, okay, this pertains to borrowing or lending or or extending credit of of money to to the bank. If you borrow money from the bank or you lend money, okay. So there is long term proceeds of long term loan from a bank, okay. Then additional investment from the owner, and also it may include. The drawing of the investment, and then what do you mean by the drawing of an investor? That means the the investor or the owner, the part owner of the business would want to reduce his investment. Maybe he would want to withdraw money for his personal use or whatever. Okay, so now we got here the net cash, uh, net increase in cash and cash equivalents of two million six hundred. Then. Plus the January one, the beginning cash balance, which is one million, then you will have a cash ending balance of three million six hundred thousand. In order to check if your item is correct, if your cash, if your cash flow statement is correct, you have this balance in your cash December thirty one should be equal to your cash balance in your balance sheet. Okay, so that is one way of checking if your cash balance is correct. We are preparing the cash flow statement to check the correctness of the flow of your cash in the company. As we have stated earlier, cash is the most liquid asset, so we have to take care of it. Simply that the cash balance in your the cash balance in your in your balance sheet is correctly stated as evidenced by your Cash flow statement. So, okay. Next. Okay. So again, what are the things that we need to to resist to take note in a cash flow? There are three activities: operating activities, investing activities, financing activities. Okay. There are cash inflow and outflow in all these activities. Then we go to let's go to the rules on debit and credit. Okay, this is a very common question in the exam. Okay, so I have written here a T account, a letter T. Okay, in accounting, this is called a T account because it looks like a T. It's really a real T letter. Okay, so the debit column has assets, costs, expenses, and drawing. The credit column has liabilities, income, capital, and sales accounts. Okay, uh, we have to memorize these these normal accounts. These are what you call the normal accounts of of assets, costs, and expenses, and drawing. This this has normal debit balance. Okay, the liabilities, income, capital, and sales have normal credit balance. Okay, so that's it. We have to memorize again. A said, assets, costs, expenses, and borrowing. What is the normal balance of all these accounts? Very good. That's debit balance. And what is what are the what is the normal balances of liabilities, income, capital, and sales? Correct. Liabilities, income, and capital, and sales have normal credit balances. Okay. Why is it so? Okay. Let me explain. In in the rules of debit and credit, the, uh, upon knowing that the normal balances are these things, there is uh, because of because of the movement of all these accounts. Okay, why do I, why is it that asset may be a debit or a credit? Because there are there are changes. This the the movements means the assets may increase or may decrease. Okay, so I'll give you. I'll give you the basic rule. Okay, the basic rule is that the basic rule on debit and credit is that to increase, okay, the ones on the debit side, to increase the debit side, the asset liability. Okay, no, no. Ah, uh, let me repeat. The the rules on debit and credit. Asset is a normal debit balance. Liability is a normal credit balance. Income or equity capital. It's a normal credit balance. These ones are normal debit balances. Okay. To increase, to increase the asset. Okay. To increase the asset, what do you do? You debit.
debit it. Okay? Debit you. Okay. Then liabilities. To increase your liabilities account, what do you do? You credit it. Okay? Then the capital account, the income and sales. To increase all this, you have to credit. To debit all these accounts in the asset, you credit them. Again, let me repeat the, the rule. These assets, costs, expenses, and borrowing, they have normal debit balance. Meaning they are always on the left. No, no, not always, but the normal. The normal balances of this account should be debit, and the normal balances of this account should be credit. But it may happen that these, these things may also go to the credit side, and these things may go to the left side. How come? Okay. To increase the, the, the debits, to increase your asset costs and expenses, what do you do? You debit them. Okay? To increase this, you debit them. To increase your liabilities, income, capital, assets, you credit them. Okay? So, to increase, you follow the normal balances of the accounts. Okay, next. To decrease, to decrease the account, what do you do? To do the opposite. Okay. For example, you want to decrease your asset. Okay? You want to decrease your asset, what do you do? You do the, you want to decrease your asset, you do the opposite. And what is the opposite of the normal balance of, of the asset which is debit? You credit it. Okay? So, for example, you want to increase, uh, to decrease your cost. Okay? You credit expenses. Okay? Then drawing. Drawing is not credited, okay? But that is a deduction to your capital, okay? So if you want to decrease your liabilities, what do you do? You debit it. If you want, okay, income, income is a normal credit balance. If you want to decrease your income, you incur costs and expenses, okay? If you want to decrease your capital, you incur drawing or withdrawal. Okay, sales is a normal credit balance. If you want to decrease your sales, you incur what? Cost and expenses. So that's it, okay? Next we have here. Okay, let's try these examples. Ben invested 1 million to XYZ company. Okay, when we say that Ben invested 1 million, 1 million is what type of account? That is... Yes, that is a capital account. What is the normal balance of equity or capital? Correct, credit account. So when we invest, you yeah, and you invest, okay, here's the answer. So then capital, we have, we have uh, analyzed this all ago. Then invested one million, so capital account is a normal credit balance, so you credit one million, and then when then invested one million, the company received 1 million cash. So you debit, okay? So you debit cash, 1 million. Anyway, you don't have to write ER, CR. But for purposes of our study, so that you will be familiar with this, the first line is the debit. Then it is invented. Look at this. There is a space here. I think that's five spaces, okay? Then it becomes your credit. And take note also, your debit and your credit must always be equal. And what form of entry are we preparing here? We are preparing double entries. Why double entries? Because there is a debit entry and there is a credit entry. Okay, next. XYZ borrowed 500,000 to ABC. Take note. What type of activity is this? A loan, okay? The uh, XYZ is borrowing money. So when you borrow money, okay, okay. So when you borrow money, when XYZ borrowed money to ABC Bank, what did XYZ receive? Okay, when you borrow money from the bank, what do you receive? What does XYZ receive? You will receive cash. So you debit cash in the amount of 500,000. But since you borrowed money, Look at this. Borrowed 500,000. When you borrow money, that is a payable. Okay, that's a liability account. And a liability account has a credit balance. So your credit most payable to ABC Bank 500,000. Why not uh, most payable? Because 
Well, every time you borrow money to the bank, you have to uh, sign a promissory note. Okay, next. Tears of $2 million was reported to XYZ company. There is a sales. And then, what type of account is sales? Okay, sales is a, an income account. Okay, so it is a credit. Okay, what is credit? Sales. Sales. Sales of $2 million, but when the when the when your accountant reported that there is a sales of two million, meaning you received uh was this cash? Okay, you received cash of two million, so debit cash, and then you credited sales because that is the normal balance of sales, the credit. Okay, next we have here XYZ pay in full to ABC Bank. So XYZ, the company, paid the bank. Let us see. How much was the loan? And XYZ paid in full to the bank. A while ago, we credited notes for the world because there was a liability, okay? But since the liability of credit was not paid, so you will reduce your liability from credit, you know you go to debit, okay? So from here, I think it is here. When you borrow money, I will here. Here, borrowed, XYZ borrowed money. So when you borrowed money, what happened? You credited no sale because you incurred liability. And liability is a credit account. And then you receive cash. But to be, what happened to be? You now pay in full. So it's the other way around. You have to debit your notes payable because you have to reduce your liability and to reduce your liability means you have to put it to the debit side. Okay, so you put the notes payable to the debit side, meaning you are canceling now your liability, making it zero. But since you pay money to the bank, what are uh, you, you release money so there is a credit of cash of 500,000. So you have given out. We have given out money so that is a credit to cash. Next, we have XYZ bought 100,000 for equipment. Okay, when, the, when XYZ bought equipment, what did the company receive? Yes, the company received an equipment because he bought an equipment. So the company debited equipment because that is what the company received. Equipment in the amount of 100, the value of 100,000. And since he bought equipment, he reduced his cash because he has to pay. Okay, for the purchase of the, for the, purchase of the equipment, he has to release 100,000. So credit cash, 100,000. Credit cash because you have given out. Okay, next. XYZ paid rent $70,000 and salaries $20,000. Okay, what kind of accounts are rent and salaries? Well, rent and salaries are both expenses. Okay, since they are both expenses, what are the normal balances of rent of expenses? Rent and salaries, they are debit. So we debit rent expense because this is an expense account. We debit salary expense because this is an expense account again. And we credit cash. Why did we credit cash? Because you have given out a, a, a certain amount of cash which is 90000 Okay. A, a cash was released, so credit because you have given out. Okay. Next. 27. Oh no, uh, slide 27. Then we drew 50k from this investment. Okay, so what type of account is this? We draw one or a drawing account of 50 from this investment. So when you withdraw from your investment, what happens to your investment? It is a reduction to your investment. So here, you know, how do you reduce your equity account? You debit it by using the drawing account. Okay, so then, come on, drawing account, 50,000. Why did you debit again? Because credit is equity account. When you want to reduce the equity account, you have to do a debit. Do the opposite by putting or by debiting drawing account. Okay, since uh, then we draw uh, then we are withdrawal, we have to pay then cash. 
So that is uh, we are giving out cash of fifty thousand. So that is crediting. Okay, crediting cash by fifty thousand. Next, XYZ bought five thousand for office supplies. Okay, so. XYZ bought office supplies in the amount of 50,000. So that get office supplies, okay? This becomes part of your of your asset, your supplies, okay? Then since you bought something for the company, then you release cash. You have given out cash and that is credit. Debit office supplies because you received. You received office supplies, so you debit office supplies and you credit cash because you have given out cash. So you credit it. Okay, next. Now let's go to markup. Okay, what is it then markup? Markup is the what? The increase, the income, the cost uh, to have uh, to have in business to have profit, we put markup. Okay, so the, the problem says here the desired markup is 400%, but the cost is 20 so how much should be the selling price okay can you solve it okay so let me see okay markup and you is the markup 400 percent is the desired markup and the 20 okay 20 is the cost so how much is your markup 80 pesos to check markup percentage is equals to markup over the cost times 100 percent so the markup percentage is 400, 80 divided by 20 is equal to 400%. So how much is your, uh, uh, the selling price will be cost plus the markup is equal to 20 plus 80 is equal to 100. So what's your markup again? 80 pesos. Because you have base it from your markup percentage of 400, multiply it by your cost so you get 80. So selling price of 100 less 20, so your markup is 80 pesos. Okay? Then we go to another problem on markup. So what then is markup? It is an additional value to the cost. Okay? Selling price is 500 with a markup of 20%. So how much is the cost? Okay, now let's go to the... In the previous problem, we were, we were looking for the... For the what? For the selling price. Now we are looking for the cost. Okay, we are now looking for the cost. Okay, so markup is markup percentage times the cost. Markup percentage is how much? 20 or 0.20 times the cost. Markup is selling price minus the cost. So 0.20, 0.20 C, this one, 0.20 C, then we put the selling price minus the cost by means of cancellation. 0.20C plus C is equal to SP, so we reduce 120, so C is equal to 500 divided by 1.2, 416.67. So what is the cost again? 416.67. We use the cancellation method. So let's, let's do it now. The selling price is 500. The cost is 416.67, so your markup is 20% or 83.33, okay? Next, we go to mark on. What is a mark on? Mark on is an increase in selling price, okay? Current selling price of the shirt is 500. A mark on of 25% was added to the selling price due to its high demand. What is the new selling price of the shirt? So we are putting mark on because we would want to increase the selling price. When there is high demand for, for a product, the tendency of, of a business is to increase, to increase its selling price by putting a mark on. Okay, so that is a mark on. So now let's show there. Mark on is equal to increase in selling price. The formula is mark on is equal to mark on percentage times the selling price. So the mark on percentage is how much? 25 or 0 0.25. 25 percent or 0 0.25 times 500. So your mark on is 125. So your uh, selling price new minus the selling price current is equal to 125. 25. So selling price new minus 500, 
When we twenty-five plus five hundred, we have to put this on the left side. So five hundred becomes positive. So your new selling price is how much? Six hundred twenty-five. Did you get it? Yes. So your new selling price, selling price new is six hundred twenty-five. So one hundred twenty-five minus six hundred twenty-five minus five hundred is equal. Okay. So now we are getting. Ah, uh, now we have now the markdown. Okay, markdown is a reduction in your selling price. For example, here is the problem. Current selling price of jeans is nine hundred, but it's now sold for only five hundred. What is the markdown? Okay, so if mark on is increasing the selling price, markdown is reducing the selling price. Okay, so. The problem says, what is the markdown percentage? Okay, let's look for, let's solve for this. Okay, so the markdown is a reduction in the selling price. So markdown is equal to selling price current minus the selling price new, or markdown is equal to markdown percentage times the selling price current. So markdown is equal to 900 minus 500. So the markdown is how much? Two hundred. So two hundred. The good cancellation again. My one percentage times nine hundred. The cancel nine hundred. So two hundred divided by nine hundred. It will give us point twenty three or a net down percentage of twenty three percent. Okay, I hope you're getting it. Now let's go to net down again. Selling price of bag today is seven hundred. Okay, and given a markdown of ten percent, what was its old selling price? For today, we are now looking for the old selling price. The selling price current is seven hundred. The markdown percentage is ten percent. So the markdown is equal to the selling price old minus the selling price current. Okay, let's solve it. Here is now the solution. Markdown is equal is equal to selling price old minus the selling price current. The markdown percentage is how much? Point ten is equal to selling price old minus the selling price new. So point ten is equal to selling price old minus seven hundred. And when we do the cancellation, we put seven hundred to the left, so it becomes positive. Seven hundred is equal to selling price old minus. Then we put point ten. To the right, so it becomes negative. So one SPO here becomes one. One SPO minus point ten SPO. The answer is point nine SPO. Okay, did you see this? Point nine SPO. As again seven hundred. So we have to redo. We have to cancel nine point ninety point ninety seven hundred divided by point ninety. So your Answer is seven hundred seventy-seven point seventy-eight. This is the selling price old. Okay, did you get it? Very good. So if you check your work, markdown is equal to markdown percentage times the selling price current. So we reduce it. Markdown is equal to point ten minus a uh, times the selling price current. Point ten times seven hundred seventy-seven. Point seven eight is equal to seven seven point seven eight. So that means the markdown per markdown is selling price old minus the selling price current. The markdown of seventy seven seven eight is equal to the selling price old minus the selling price new seven seventy seven point seven eight plus seven hundred. So we get the correct answer. So what is your uh, selling price old? Seven hundred seventy-seven point seventy-eight. Very good. Now let's go to principal. Now let's learn how to compute the principal, the rate, the interest, and the time, and the maturity or maturity value or the future value. Okay. You earn two thousand interest at ten percent rate. Okay. How much was your investment for two years? So what's the unknown here? The principal. Okay, now let's solve the problem. The formula for the principal, take note, is interest over the rate times the time. So principal is equal to two thousand divided by point ten. Point ten times two is equal to point two. So two thousand divided by point two. The answer is ten thousand pesos. So how much was your principal or your original investment? 
10,000 pesos. Next, interest. Okay, let's solve for the interest. How much is the interest if you receive 10,000 loan proceeds with interest amount of 150 for a three year for a three year term? Okay, so what is the unknown year? The unknown year is the interest. So what is the formula for interest? Okay, I know, sorry. The unknown year is the, how much is the rate? Yes. No, sorry, the unknown year should be the rate. Oh, let's do this. It should be the rate, not the interest, okay? The unknown year is the rate. Rate of interest, okay. So the formula for the rate is interest divided by the principal times the time. So, rate is equal to how much was the rate? How much was the interest? 150 pesos. And how much was the principal? 10,000 pesos times the time of 3 years. So, 150, 10,000 times 3 is 30,000. 150 divided by 30,000 will give us what? 0 0.005 or 5%. Okay, now let's go to the next slide. Now, the problem here is time or term. So, the unknown. How long will your 25,000 investment earn 3,000 interest at a rate of 12%? So, what is the unknown? The time or the term of the loan. So, let, let's solve it. To solve for the unknown, uh, for the time or the term, it is uh, interest divided by the principal times the rate. So, the time... Uh, yes, the interest is 3,000 divided by 25,000 times 0.12 will give us 3,000. So, 3,000 divided by 3,000. So, the term or the time period is one year. Okay, it's getting easier, right? Now, we have here, how much interest do you earn from your investment? And then interest. How much interest do you earn from your investment of 50,000? at 5% rate in 5 years. So what's the formula for interest? What's the formula for interest? Okay. Interest is equal to the principal times the rate times the time. So 50,000 times 5% times 5 years. So your interest is 1,250. Very good. So, but the next problem is how much is the maturity value or the Yes, the maturity value of the uh, of your investment. So, uh, F or the maturity value, future value, principal plus the interest. So, how much do you get? So, principal is fifty thousand plus the interest of one thousand two hundred fifty. So, your maturity value is fifty-one thousand two hundred fifty. Okay. Now we have reached the last problem. So, again. Thank you very much for studying with me. I hope you learned a lot for your preparation for your licensure examination for teachers. Good luck and God bless everyone. Yeah. Oh.